I came to talk to HMC really about where I thought we were in terms of uh, as a nation how successful our education system is and what I see as the prospects for reform going forward and I suppose to what extent we can develop a national consensus about what the priorities should be. My overall take is this, our top schools are truly excellent and that includes many of you here today and some outstanding state schools too. There's been an overall upward drift um, in results, put on one side arguments about grade inflation, which is pretty marginal, but there remains a long tail of underachievement. This blights the lives and prospects of too many children and has a significantly harmful effect on the economy. Last month, the CBI became the latest organization to call for schools to be assessed, not just on their exam results, but also on the degree to which they turn out well-rounded pupils. In other words, on their ability to teach character. I know this is something many of you in the HMC, HMC feel strongly about, and I think with good reason. Many of your schools are rightly acknowledged for their impressive exam results, and many of you are equally celebrated for the character building ethos you inculcate in your students. I'm not suggesting for a moment we should downgrade the importance of qualifications. They are passports on the road to wider opportunities, particularly, of course, for poorer pupils. They're the absolute essential to life chances being opened up, but results alone aren't sufficient. I'm currently chairing a select committee in the House of Lords on digital skills and competitiveness. The committee members have been struck by the markedly broad consensus from the wide range of businesses and academics from whom we've, whom we've heard evidence that high standards of core skills are absolutely essential, but that they also seek broader skills of creative thinking, teamwork, resilience. I appreciate that judging schools on their ability to mint model citizens will not be easy, but I recognize we must move to a system that defines the achievements of a school by, by more than an alphabet of exam grades. Both progress and achievement re remain key, but there needs to be a richer assessment. It would be strange, finally, for me not to offer a few thoughts to you today on the role of the independent sector in our nation's educational system. And I want to argue today there are educational, moral and pragmatic reasons for us all working together better. Call it collective enlightened self-interest if you like. There is both academically excellent and innovative practice in many of your schools. This needs to be spread and shared to help raise standards beyond your walls. I know from, from personal experience that many of you embrace this approach. For example, welcoming would-be heads of tough schools to understand how you develop a whole school ethos, explaining how you undertake comprehensive professional development or sharing research about the brains of adolescents and so much more.